is Joe Kelsey, an Indianapolis dairy farmer, he and his wife. And you've had this farm for since the 1800s? Yes, that's correct. Wonderful, wonderful. And you farm about 500 cows? Yes, we've got about 500 that are milking. Uh, and there's probably another 600 or so that are uh, the little ones. Uh, so a total of about oh. 1,100. But here on the, at the location that we're at now, about 500 milking. Wonderful. And, and there were about, four, which was astonishing, 42,000 dairy farms throughout the U.S. So tell us a little bit about the life of a dairy farmer and, and how technology has changed it since the 1800s. Oh, sure. Yeah, those early days, uh, <laughs> certainly uh, technology was a whole different uh, uh, discussion. But what's been cool about uh, dairy farming, and I think agriculture more generally, is that theme of constant improvement and how we find the next innovation and how we integrate it into our farms. Uh, so as people get further and further disconnected from the farm and for where their food is produced, uh, there's uh, an increasing level of interest on uh, how is milk produced and how, uh, what's its source and what kinds of activities happen on the farm uh, to make it come to, to pass. And that's a space where I think there's an incredible amount of opportunity uh, for us on the farm uh, to really connect with our customer and our consumer to help understand each other on what kind of practices happen on the farm, what kind of technologies employ, we employ, uh, and what kind of uh, uh, ways what we're doing as we look to the future on how to do the best with the resources that we're, that we're blessed with uh, to make food for people. So here on our farm, uh, we milk three times a day. We milk at nine in the morning, at five in the afternoon, and, uh, and one in the morning. And so uh, it takes about five hours or so to milk and about an hour, hour and a half to wash down. And so nearly around the clock, uh, there are people here uh, feeding, caring for, watching after, and milking the cows. And our focus is really to help to understand the cow's experience and how we can uh, uh, make the best of that. And whether that's through uh, cow comfort, like sprinklers uh, that keep them cool, sprinklers and fans that keep them cool in the summer, uh, it's, uh, it's buildings and, and protection from the elements of if the weather is inclement. Maybe it's a nice, dry, soft bed for them to lay on and take a rest. Uh, maybe it's um, um, collecting information, like uh, how much milk the cows are producing and, and using that information to make decisions on our farm to help improve uh, uh, the experience those cows have. Well, now, you know, a lot of people say that technology has come a long way in life in general, but yet people seem to have less time today than they did when we didn't have all this technology. <laughs> How about the farmer? Do you find that now with all this technology, you almost have less time because you're taking care of the technology and the cows? Well, I think that technology is a great tool. And as we uh, look to innovate new uh, pieces of technology on, on, on a farm, uh, we're, we're using that technology to think about the cow experience. And so maybe it's automated calf feeding. And so rather than uh, um, um, spending a lot of time in uh, muck boots and, uh, and carrying heavy buckets, now we're spending time with the information about how often the calves are eating and how much the calves are eating and how much nutrition is being delivered right. to the calves. Uh, the same thing with uh, milk production. I mean, when we're talking about how much milk the cow can give uh, and what our expected amount is, we can capture that data and analyze that decisionable uh, and actionable type uh, information uh, to improve um, things. So certainly uh, it's a different set of tasks, uh, but uh, unfortunately there's no more hours in the day, and that, that remains constant, uh, but we'll do the best we can with the hours that we're given. And now, is there a website where people can go to learn more about where their dairy, you know, and how it's produced? Absolutely. UndeniablyDairy.org is a great site for background information and for a snapshot of what's happening in dairies around the country. Uh, but I also might encourage you all to uh, take a look at a local dairy farmer. There's 42,000 dairy farmers sprinkled all over the United States, and they can't wait to have a conversation with you. So give them a call, oh, stop yeah. by their farm, make an arrangement with them. Uh, they'd love to share their story. Oh, I'm sure. And I heard you had the, uh, saw here that you had the honor of being the milkman oh. at the Indianapolis <laughs> 500? It is the coolest tradition in all of sports uh, to hand that ice cold bottle of milk to the winning driver. <laughs> An incredible May, uh, and I encourage you to, to uh, celebrate your win with a glass of milk as well. 
Oh, nothing better. Nothing better. Well, I want to thank you because I'm sure people are interested, concerned, you know, where their products are coming from. And, uh, you know, between milk and, and, and cream, nothing better than fresh cream. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's right. So, I appreciate, and I'm going to go to learn more about it, and I'm sure the readers will, too. Great. So thank you so much to you and your family for all the years of dedication in farming. And, and that, is, that is true. A lot of farms are generational, and that's still true today, right? That's indeed true. 98% uh, of farms are family-owned, and uh, those family connections are so important. We really appreciate being on. It's our pleasure to be a part of this business. Oh, and, and it's and it's a love, and that's why you do it because it's it's part of your DNA, so to speak. Indeed. So thank you for what you do, and um, and I encourage my readers to go uh, look that up and see how the milk gets to their table. Undeniablyberry.org. So thank you again, Joe. Yes, indeed. Thank you.